It's Croctober, and today I'm making pumpkin pie cake. Hey everybody, it's Amanda, and today I am making my video for Croctober. I'm really excited that this has come around, especially so quickly after September. Um, I have decided to make a dessert because frankly I was getting ready to make one. <laughs> I thought you guys might like the recipe. Um, but I actually think this is a really great recipe for the fall because what everybody wants for their upcoming holidays is usually pumpkin pie. And sometimes if you don't get it made in advance or you don't have a good enough schedule on the day of your holidays or your big family events, usually you don't have room in your oven to make it and so it kind of gets left out. And so having a crock pot version will work for you. So like what I'm what I mean is like on Thanksgiving you got your turkey or your ham in the oven. If you didn't make your pumpkin pie, what are you gonna do? You're gonna break your crock pot. That's what you're gonna do. And you're still gonna have a pumpkin pie-esque dessert that your whole family will love and it'll still give you the spirit of the season. Um, the version I'm making today is actually vegan because uh, I don't know if you guys heard this, but Brianna is engaged. Yes, she is engaged. I'll try to insert some pictures so you guys can see. And the lucky gentleman's name is Trey and Trey's birthday is this week and Trey is vegan so I am making this pumpkin pie cake for Trey for his enjoyment but I'm gonna tell you the recipe how to make it like a normal recipe <laughs> with dairy and eggs but I'm gonna show you my vegan substitutions and you can actually make this also gluten-free which is another reason why I think it's a great uh, recipe for your holidays because a lot of times at the holiday season you have family and friends over who might have special dietary needs and if you don't know what to make for them, it can be kind of stressful. So this will work for someone who's gluten-free, vegan, dairy-free, all of the frees. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna tell you the ingredients that I have. I'm gonna tell you the substitutions. All of the official ingredients and substitutions will be down in the description box. And as soon as I show you all of those, we will get started with this recipe, super easy and quick. Okay, so here are our ingredients and those flowers Trey sent to Brianna. So they, they get to enjoy the tabletop setting. But anyway, here we have our ingredients. And first of all, we have our pumpkin. You want pure pumpkin, not pumpkin pie mix, pure pumpkin. Ground cinnamon, ground cloves, pumpkin pie spice, salt, baking soda, back there is baking powder. Brown sugar, I actually need a lot, so I have like a little tiny left in a bag and I have a big bag behind it. So let me tell you the ingredients I'm switching out. You have uh, earth balance instead of butter. So it, the butter, you can completely change out for earth balance. And instead of eggs, I'm going to make a flax egg, which I have actually already started here in the front. And I have a video on how to make a flax egg. If you're interested, I'll link it at the top. Also in the back there, I have a big bucket of flour. And if you want, I totally recommend Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one, uh, gluten-free baking mix. If you want to make this as a gluten-free dessert, you can totally do it that way. So those are your ingredients and substitutions. I do wanna to mention too, that for this recipe, you will need foil. I recommend parchment paper and paper towels or a hand towel. So let me talk a little bit about how we are going to cook this cake in our crock pot. Okay, so you can see that I have our crock pot set up right here and there are some things that I already have in it that I'm gonna to explain to you. First thing I wanna tell you is you need to make sure that you have a crock pot that is not digital. If it is digital, you cannot bake a cake in it, at least not well, you know, it doesn't, the, the way that the digital one is made, you're not gonna be able to get an even bake because they kind of block the heat in the area of the digital so it doesn't break. <laughs> so it, it throws off the baking of a cake. So you wanna make sure it's a non-digital one. Secondly, you're going to line your crock pot. Now, here's a couple of things that I want you to be aware of. So first, I have a strip, just a plain strip of aluminum foil. Basically, I took one big sheet of aluminum foil and I folded it into thirds and I put it in the pot and kind of leaned it over the side. And this is going to be our handles. When it comes time to pull the cake out, we're actually going to pull this up and that's going to help us make sure that it doesn't break apart. Okay. The next layer that you wanna put in is another layer of foil, okay? And basically you just form it around the bottom 
and make sure it comes up at least an inch or two on all sides. And this is going to help us get an even bake. Okay, there's a lot of foil in this recipe because, I mean, a crock pot really only has the coils to cook in certain places and a cake really needs an oven because of the even uh, temperature that it keeps. So we're going to try to fake an oven by putting that foil in there. And then because I personally don't like my food touching foil, I put some parchment paper inside and my food will actually be on the parchment paper. So don't ask me why I don't like that. You guys can Google that <laughs> and get your own opinion, but that is what I prefer to do. Here's the other thing, because like I said, we need to make an oven. When you put your lid on, see how this one has hole? Okay, if yours has a hole or two, you definitely wanna put some foil under that because it is going to help block that off. You wanna keep that even temperature. You want to put the foil under it you want to keep that even temperature but underneath that foil we're going to put a towel now you can either put an actual hand towel or i have a couple of layers of paper towel and we're going to put that on top and the reason why is this is going to soak up the condensation okay you don't want all that condensation dripping on your cake and not making it moist, making it wet and soggy. It's not a good thing for a cake. So these are a few layers that are necessary when you bake with your crock pot to make it just right, but it is worthwhile because you will get an, a nicely baked cake without much stress at all. And there's gonna be very little cleanup as well. So with that being said, now that we have everything set up, let me tell you how we're going to make this recipe. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is cream together your brown sugar and your butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out two cups of brown sugar. And I'm going to mix that with half a cup of unsalted butter. Okay, you can see that our butter and our sugar has uh, mixed together very nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and add the flax eggs in there. And you would add your regular eggs if you were making this with regular eggs. And we're gonna mix that together. We're gonna go ahead and put our pumpkin in. get a spoon and scrape down the walls of the bowl and then we will let it mix again and then we will work on our dry ingredients okay so in my bowl I have one and a half cups of flour and to that I'm going to add my additional ingredients so the first thing that we're going to add is our baking powder and baking soda and they both need one and a half teaspoons Then we're going to take a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. You want an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves, which is really just like a pinch. Another half teaspoon of salt. And now that we have all of our dry ingredients, we're just going to mix those up. Slowly incorporate that into our wet mix. We're gonna go ahead and take our spoon and finish stirring that up and then we are going to scoop it into our crock pot. Okay, so here is our cake batter. It looks like any other cake batter you've ever seen. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the crock pot here and you just wanna be real careful to make sure you get it inside if you're using parchment paper, inside the parchment paper. <laughs> Don't let it get between the parchment paper and the foil because it's going to bend over and it's really easy to do that. And it's extra hard when you're trying to film yourself. <laughs> I think the trick to doing it is just to pour it right in the center. And then once you get it all in there, 
you can use your spoon or spatula to just kind of spread it out. Okay, now, remember our layers. Paper towel, layer one, foil, layer two, and then we're gonna put the lid on. And we gotta make sure it's, it's seated in there really nicely. We could even bend the paper or the foil around it a little bit just to make sure everything is good. Okay, so now we have our crock pot. Everything is in, the, the lid is on. We are going to turn it on high and we are going to let it cook for two hours and then we will check it. We're gonna insert a toothpick or something else inside of it just to see if it's dry in the middle. It could cook up to three, maybe even three and a half hours depending on your crock pot. But as soon as it's dry in the middle when the toothpick's inserted, that is when you know it is done. So we are going to let this cook and we'll see it when it's done. Okay, so I have a skewer that I'm gonna use. Now we'll go ahead and take the lid off. And we're gonna see if our pumpkin cake is ready. I don't know if you guys can see this. It, it still looks a little moist in the middle. Let me show you. Okay, that's what it looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and poke the center. And you can see there's still a little bit of moisture there. So I'm gonna put the lid back on and let it cook for another half hour, 45 minutes or so. Uh, it's just, just a little dry crumb coming off the end. I, I I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna call it done because the crumb is really dry and I'm looking at the edges and I think, I think we're about ready. I don't wanna touch that thought. <laughs> what I am gonna do, let me tell you what you gotta do here. We are going to unplug this. Went ahead and did that. And I'm going to um, let it sit here with the lid off for about 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and put it onto an oval shaped serving platter so it can cool completely before we do anything else with it, which, you know, we're gonna try to ice it, but that's what you wanna to do to it. So I'm gonna let this sit and then I'm going to flip it out on the serving platter and I will show you what it looks like. So here's our pumpkin cake, and you can see that it's actually pretty smooth here on the bottom. Once it cools completely, you can easily frost it, and you have a nice oval shape. I know I have a little bit of crumbs there. And the really great thing about this is that, again, I will point out to you, no mess. Completely clean, just gotta throw that away. Beautiful, tasty cake. And I wish you could smell it, because, I mean, it literally smells like 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 you would expect a pumpkin cake to taste and it does have like i don't know if you can see like this side has a little bit more browning actually looks i think darker in the camera than it looks in real life let me see if i can yeah it looks a little darker on camera it actually looks like it just is a little bit more dark brown and the rest of the way around doesn't look too bad but you know what I, i'll tell you the truth the texture of this is almost brownie like just almost and so those darker patches there, you know, some people are really going to love those. So don't, don't feel bad about that at all. I'm telling you, like literally I'm telling you on camera, that looks much darker than it is in real life. So uh, again, cool completely. And then put a frosting on it. If you like, I am going to do that. I'm actually going to let it cool overnight and we will frost it in the morning. Okay, so it is the next day and we are going to make some icing and get the cake together. Okay, so to make our cream cheese icing, I have my, my vegan cream cheese. Um, this is just a plain cream cheese. Any will do. I, I really like the Kite Hill, but I couldn't find it today. So we went with this one because this is the one Brianna recommended. She said it was her favorite. This in here. By the way, this one you find in the, well, at Ingles anyway, you find it in the produce section. But there were other cream cheeses in the cream cheese section uh, if you were looking for this. 
And then we have a quarter cup Earth Balance butter. Now again, you could make this regular with regular cream cheese and regular butter and it would, it would work just fine. Got a little pure vanilla. We'll probably add about a teaspoon of this. And then you can use your favorite non-dairy milk. I'm gonna use oat milk and I'll probably do another tablespoon or so of that. And we're gonna mesh all of those wet ingredients really fast. So I have a half a cup of powdered sugar here and I'm gonna add it just a little bit of a time at a time and let this continue mixing until it's smooth. I gave it a little taste, it tastes great. And so we will put this on our cake. Okay, so here is the cake. And basically what I did was I just poured the cream cheese icing over the top and just let it fall down and it looks kind of smooth. Now this is, <laughs> this is not a fancy cake by any means, but it doesn't have to be. It just has to be good. So I put a little sprinkles on it, a little happy birthday beautifulness, and that is the cake. Now. We have to save this for Trey, and I have to get your video up, and I don't have time to do both. So what I am going to do is I'm going to um, cut the cake when we cut it with him, and I'll show you some pictures of what the inside looks like. But it is a beautiful, tasty, yummy cake, and I am sure you will love it. Trust me on this. And if you were inclined, if you had two, two crock pots, that were roughly the same size, you could actually make a layer cake and it would look just like a regular formal cake that you would get anywhere else. It just depends on how you ice it. So this is our beautiful pumpkin cake. And when Trey gets here, we're going to enjoy it, but I hope that you guys will give it a try. And it's another great use for your crock pot to make a dessert. Okay, so we have our cake and I think honestly, y'all, I am not, a baker person, but I think it looks pretty stinking good for just a regular cake, right? I know one thing, it tastes good and I'm gonna eat it. So I hope that you guys are excited about using your crock pot for something that's not just like savory dishes, you can use it for something different. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this put in the fridge because it is a cream cheese icing, so it's gonna have to go in the fridge until later, but we're gonna have it and it's gonna be a really great time. So anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I hope that you are enjoying Crocktober. Don't forget to look down in the description box below to get a link to all the different channels that are part of Crocktober so you can get more Crockpot recipes. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye. One more quick thing I wanna mention is that Crocktober is doing another giveaway. You can check out Jenny Goff's channel for more information on that giveaway. I'll link it down below. But I am gonna attach on the end of this video the reveal video for where I did the drawing for the giveaway for September. So that way you guys can see who won and congratulate the winner. So stay tuned for that and that's it. We'll see you guys next time. Hey everybody, it's Amanda and it is time to do the drawing for our $100 Amazon gift card giveaway for September. So in this bowl, I don't know if you guys can see it, I have some papers in here and it is the numbers one through 30 and that corresponds to each day of September. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and draw one number out. I'll put my bowl down so I don't drop it. <laughs> and it is, let's see if we can get it to focus here. 18, 18, ladies excited too. So that means that we are going to look at the 18th day, the 18th video that we have for our September collaboration and that person's video will be the one that we go on to do a random comment picker and find a winner. So let me pull up my videos here. Yay! And the 18th day is Katie's video at Missouri Grown Carolina Home. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up her video, get the link for that, and then we'll use the random comment picker to pick a winner. Okay, so we have Katie's video here, and 
I'm going to go ahead and copy the link and let's get the random comment picker. Okay, so I'm going to open this random comment picker and we're going to go to YouTube. And we're going to enter the link to Katie's video and they're going to pull up all the comments and we will hit start and it will pick a random winner. Yay! Cheryl Siegler! I am so, I hope I said that right. She's a pretty doggy picture. All right, let me go to Katie's video and we'll find her comment. And there she is. I'm going to go ahead and reply on her comment and say, Cheryl, congratulations. You are the winner of, what well, it would help if I spelled those things right. <laughs> Don't judge my typing, people. You are the winner of our giveaway. Please email, and I should probably spell that right too, email me at info at the fundamental home .com. Make sure I spelled that right so she can email me properly. <laughs> okay, so congratulations, Cheryl. I'm going to hit reply so she knows. And she is our winner. So congratulations, Cheryl. Thank you, everyone who was a part of Souptember.